The building is interesting in that it was purposely built for the space of land that it's on. It's on a triangular plot of land bound by a marketplace at Downey Street and Wellington Street. So you, ha you have this triangle. A and the building was built to conform to the triangle. Uh, it's got the broad front and, and it narrows up as the sides go down. When it was built at the turn of the century in, in 1900, it more than satisfied the needs of the community, needs of the municipality in terms of city business. All of that changed when municipal government grew. So you had more people needing office space, more meeting space required. The other thing that happened was that it had been neglected from a, from a, a maintenance point of view. Uh, you know, when the roof started to leak and the heating system had been let go, so the, there, there were problems with heating, a, a lot of tr problems with ventilation, uh, no cooling other than um, uh, window shakers for for air conditioning units. There was no central air conditioning. So a lot of these things were coming together and people were saying, look, do we really, really want to spend any money on this? And if we do, how much is it going to take? Would it not be better just to knock it down and, and either go somewhere else or put up a new municipal building in the same spot? What complicated matters a little bit more was that councils routinely changed. You know, they had an election every year and there could be as many as, as six new, new councillors. Uh, or aldermen, as they called them back then. So they, they didn't come in with the same interests of the, as the six who left, and then they had to reacquaint themselves with, with bring themselves up to speed on where the whole issue stood. So there was a, a learning curve going on continually. There didn't seem to be a will at the time to, to spend money on the building. Get a business block or something, or get a hotel, get a big name hotel. That was one of the big things because Stratford was a tourist town, and of course all the merchants were saying, "Yeah, we need downtown tourists. We're we're losing we're losing customers to these malls out at the on the outskirts of the city." But there were seemingly an endless number of developers who were showing an interest and in, in coming in and developing. And then the city said, "Okay, well, if we're going to tear down the city hall, we want the development to be all of Market Square, not just." not just the city hall, we want you know, the, the area behind, all the way to marketplace. And there was one plan that called for um, the rebuilding of all the shops along marketplace. So there were all kinds of different ideas floated and they all took time for people to come and make their presentations. And then the developers would find that there's too much red tape here, there's too much opposition, we're losing interest. The municipality would, would have studies and they, they'd uh, bring in architects and they'd do a study on the building and most of these studies would say, you know, structurally, uh, you know, the, the bones are pretty good. Uh, it needs some work. They would disagree a little bit sometimes on whether they thought it had uh, artistic or architectural uh, merit. But as far as the building, it was basically a fairly sound building. By 1964, um, Dutch Meyer, uh, Clarence H. Dutch Meyer, became the mayor in Stratford, and um, it was Dutch Meyer at some point unloaded on the on the city a sketch, a design sketch for for a building that he would like to see the city hall taken down, and a, a complex, a, a hotel, business, commercial complex put up in its place. And I think it was about then that uh, some people realized, boy, this building could be going. It, you know, it, it maybe its life is endangered. And some, some people stepped up, um, in particular seven women. And there was Doris Whiteman uh, was one of the women, Ellen Stafford was another one, Evelyn Mel Melodista, Joanne Hayes, Mary Brothers, uh, Madeline Ferguson, and Winifred Nidal. Two of those women, Nidal and Dolores Whiteman, had been two of the three first ever female councillors in Stratford in 1959. The seven women, you know, you might ask, well, what, what brought them together? And I'm not entirely sure, but I can tell you that they were all involved in something. Madeline Ferguson was involved in trying to save a, a, a library in Guelph. But all of them had served on boards, had served on committees, whether it was Board of Education, Architectural Boards, um, History, club sort of thing. They had various backgrounds, but they all had involved themselves. So they were activists, I guess. Every one of them was born outside Stratford. 
and I think I have a bit of a theory about this, and I think that um, when when people come to a town, uh, they come to a town for a reason. Sometimes it's business, but if they come in retirement and they come of their own volition, they come because it's a neat town in in some ways. It has a nice river. It has a nice park system. It it has maybe maybe just maybe it's got some nice historical buildings. And we, who have been in the town forever, tend to take those things for granted. And we look more for the practical of how do, how do we deal with these buildings in a practical sense. And I can't tell you how many people say to me, you know, that city hall is just, just marvelous. Who, 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 in, who in the world has got a city hall like that? Well, the answer is nobody has. And we almost didn't. Uh, it was those seven women, in, in my mind, who, who stepped up initially and really got the ball rolling. They had, they had no money, they had no influence, they had no architectural skills or background, but they did have a will. I think if they hadn't have come together, I wouldn't guarantee that the city hall would have been saved because they gathered um, uh, parishioners, if you will, along the way, and they they'd had a petition and they had people sign petitions and they formed the Save the City Hall Committee. They were fortunate in having an ally on council, namely Dave Bradshaw. Uh, he was a, a lovable character, but boy, he uh, he wasn't afraid to stand up on a on a, on a soapbox and let people uh, know where he stood. But he gave them a louder voice, and then he he would work on the council as well. And and these councilors, if you if you look at it year by year by year, and the changes, some of them changed their minds. The other thing that happened too, and this ties in with, with Dave Bradshaw, is that he, he traveled a lot for his business. And he traveled a lot in Europe. He saw what repurposing had been done with old buildings in Europe. He saw how people took squares and, and turned them into uh, pedestrian squares and had cafes and had umbrellas and had trees and maybe some uh, water features. And he saw that and he could see that the square behind City Hall was just the perfect place for it. City Hall is just full of stories. It's just packed with stories, all the various events through the years that, that happened uh, in that building. And to have the building there that you can look at and say, yeah, but that's where this took place. People look at City Hall now and they don't think too much about the auditorium other than to, uh, there's a public meeting there because there are so many other places in, in Stratford that can be used for a concert hall. But at one time, the students at the normal school from about 1923 on, they presented Shakespearean plays. And they'd have a two-night run at City Hall. So you, you had those plays. You had plays um, were put on by drama societies other than the normal school, the little theater groups, a myriad of, of concert, uh, concert choirs, uh, you know, all ages, church groups. It was a big deal to have, to have concerts in the City Hall. When dukes and princesses and, and uh, politicians, including the prime minister, would come to town, that's where they they went to City Hall, they went to the auditorium. When the shops, when they were officially opened in February of 1909, the big dinner, the big welcome, the bunting on the, on the front of City Hall, it was all at, at City Hall. When sports teams came back after winning championships, the, they'd be taken to City Hall. It truly was a people place, and I think that's what the women fought for. They, they said, look, this is, this is not only in the center of our town, it is the center of our community. It was a heartbeat and they refused to let the let the politicians cut the heart out of the city. Mm -hmm.